What is going on guys, boy Trent is back with a video and today we're going to preview this weekend's matchup with the Ole Miss Rebels vs the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Now the game is this Saturday, comes on 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Now the up and under is 59.5, uh, Ole Miss is fair about 13 points in this matchup. Now Ole Miss, number 20 in the country, 2-0 on the season, do have wins over Troy in Central Arkansas. Now, we beat Choi 20 to 10, and then this past Saturday, we beat Central Arkansas 59 to 3. Now, Georgia Tech 1 and 1 the season. First game of the season, got beat by Clemson, which is the top five team in the country, got beat by them 41 to 10. And then this past Saturday, they beat Western Carolina 35 to 17. So, let's talk about Georgia Tech first, talk about best players to watch out for, and what to expect from them on offense this weekend. Now, the starting quarterback, number 10, Jeff Sims. Now, here in two weeks, he is 31 from 59 passing, which is a 58.5 complete percentage. Does have 264 passing yards, uh, one touchdown, two interceptions, and also not too bad of a runner either. Does have 21 carries for 89 yards as well in the season. Now, their best running back, number four, Dante Smith, 20 carries, 132 yards, three touchdowns. And then the best receiver so far here in two weeks is number eight, Nate McCollum. Has seven catches, 72 yards on the season. Now, you know, when I think of the Georgia Tech offense, first thing you think of usually is the triple option offense. Now, they have done the triple option offense for years and years and years and pretty much forever. That is what they've always done. But now they've actually had changed their offense. So their offense is kind of more like a pro style offense now, in my opinion. Uh, but they're still very run heavy. Now I can promise you in this matchup, and we're going to talk about Old Miss here in just a minute. But you're going to see a bunch of carries by a bunch of running backs this weekend. You know, for Old Miss, Old Miss runs the ball 65, 70% of the time. Drill the tank. Pretty much the same way to your attack, still to run the ball 65 70% of the time. Both teams have good running backs, both had quarterbacks, or they're also decent rushers as well. Too, uh, I'm definitely expecting a bunch of running this weekend for sure. Um, but yeah, the offense kind of more of a pro style offense now. Now, I'm gonna kind of just give you my thoughts, opinions just from watching film on them the past two weeks. They have came out pretty strong the first half. Uh, they they played pretty good the first couple quarters. But for some reason, in the second half, they have been struggling, playing nowhere as good. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't have the answer for you. I couldn't tell you the answer. But for some reason, the past two weeks in the second half, they have just not played good. They just have not looked too good. And I know that's I know that's something their coach wants to fit and prove on, but uh, even even versus Clemson, uh, they're they're at halftime. It's still pretty close at halftime. I think it was still maybe like seventeen to ten at halftime, and then basically uh, Clemson just kind of took off during the second half. And then last week versus Western Carolina, they were winning by fourteen points at halftime and then only scored. Uh, one touchdown in the second half, but the offense is not playing as good in the second half. The defense not playing as good in the second half. Just not the same energy. Uh, just not playing as hard. So I know that's something their coach definitely wants to improve and fix for sure. Because I can promise you, um, if you play good in the first half and don't play good in the second half, you won't be successful as a team this year. Um but this weekend, you definitely see a bunch of running for sure by both teams. Definitely have to watch out for Sims. Have, have to watch out for Dante Smith, the running back for sure. Uh, run the ball this weekend. No doubt about that. Now, talking about their defense. Now, we'll talk about their top four defensive players. So, the first one for them, number two, linebacker. Let's see how you pronounce his name. Ayante Iwe, number two, linebacker. Has 20 tackles, one sack on the season. And then their second best player as of right now is number one, linebacker Charlie Thomas has 18 tackles, one sack, one interception. And then third on the team is defensive back number 14, Jalen Keene has 12 tackles. And then this next guy, uh, you look at his stat, you know, his stats may not be quite as good as everybody else, 
Uh, but this guy just had three sacks on the season already, which is pretty good, pretty impressive. And uh, definitely, Ole Miss will have to block him, double team this guy this weekend for sure. But number six, uh, Kevin White is his name. Uh, this had 10 tackles on the season, which is actually, I think it's fourth on the team in tackles on the season so far. But three sacks in two games, that is pretty good, pretty impressive. Uh, Kevin White, you know, pretty tall guy, very strong, very physical. Uh, the guy will give Ole Miss offensive line problems this weekend for sure. I mean, I'm expecting some double teams or Ole Miss, you know, trying to confuse them or something this weekend. But the guy, the guys will have tackles. The guys will have sacks this weekend. And uh, Kiffin has to have a game plan for him this weekend for sure. Now, talking about Ole Miss, now, we'll start with the uh, offense first. Now, Ole Miss still has a quarterback decision to make. Uh, of course, you know, last year, Ole Miss had Matt Corral. Matt Corral went third round to the Panthers. And then this year, here in two games, we've had two guys still battle for the starting quarterback position. Now, most likely, it will be Jackson Dart starting this weekend, in my opinion. Uh, Jackson Dart, number two. Now, so far here in two weeks, he's 28 for 42 passing, uh, which is a 66.7 completion percentage, uh, 336 yards passing down the field, three interceptions, one interception. And then uh, number seven, Luke Altmaier, seven for 15, uh, 46.7 completion percentage, uh, 103 yards down the field, two touchdowns, one interception on the season. Now, Jensen Dart started week one, and then Altmaier started last week uh, versus Central Arkansas. And Altmaier actually did pretty good. Uh, Altmaier, I think, started like five for seven, six for seven. But then he had a upper body injury, and don't really know how he's doing right now. Uh, the injury didn't look too bad, so there's a chance he may be back this weekend. But you could tell last week, whenever Altmaier got hurt, you could tell he was not the same. Uh, you could tell the, the kid's definitely in pain. So, um, as of right now, in the first two weeks, Dart has looked better, played better, and I think most Ole Miss fans are expecting Jetson Dart to be your starter this week versus Georgia Tech. Now, talking about running backs, uh, Ole Miss has three pretty good running backs. Uh, last year, Ole Miss won the SEC in rushing. This year, Ole Miss probably or should lead the SEC in rushing this year, this year as well, too. Now, we'll talk about the starter and backup first. Now, the starting running back, number six, Zach Evans, has 31 carries, 183 yards, one touchdown. The backup is a true freshman, uh, Quinshawn Junkins, has 24 carries, 191 yards, one touchdown as well, too. And the other running back, I think most Ole Miss fans are kind of surprised, but this guy only has six carries so far. But this guy is still pretty good, still very talented. But that is Usalis Bentley the fourth has six carries, forty-eight yards, two touchdowns on the season as well too. So, so Georgia Tech, we'll see many Ole Miss running backs this weekend. Now Zach Evans once again, which is a starter. Zach Evans kind of more of a smaller, faster guy, um, not not as strong as the other guys. Now. Uh, Junkins, Junkins, the true freshman, but man, Junkins has so much heart, runs the ball so hard. He runs like he's mad and just pissed off every play. The kid, you, I mean, you got to love his energy, love his heart, just love the way that he tries every play. Um, and then you saw us bent with a four, kind of more of like a physical running back, kind of. Uh, you may see Bentley saw him this weekend, like in, uh, you know, like, Third and two, 31, uh, second goal, fourth and goal situations. Uh, in time, Ole Miss hits just a couple yards. And Bentley's kind of more of a physical, stronger running back. But you can say the same for Junkins as well, too. Um, but now, talking about receivers. Now, so far, best receiver so far, number one, Jonathan Mingo has six catches, 129 yards. The other receiver, number eight, Malik Heat. Uh, five catches, 67 yards. And then the starting tight end, Michael Tritt, has nine catches, 61 yards. But Tritt had three touchdowns last week versus Central Arkansas. Now, 
Truett, I think, is one of those guys that will definitely get more involved uh, for sure throughout the season. Uh, Truett's like 6'4". Uh, they played basketball back in high school. The kid has ridiculous balances. Uh, once again, super tall, very athletic, good hands. Uh, the kid's definitely very, very special. Uh, back when he first announced he was coming to Ole Miss, I said this kid reminded me of my, uh, this kid reminded me of Cal Pitts, kind of more of like a more I don't know if I want to say more athletic Cal Pitts or maybe not quite as fast as Cal Pitts, but you definitely see a Cal Pitts uh, comparison with this kid for sure. The kid's very very special. You have to watch out for him this weekend for sure. You know, last week even uh, for me watching film versus Georgia Tech. Uh, whenever I watch film with them versus Clemson and watch film versus um, Western Carolina, I did see the linebackers were struggling uh, versus tight ends. And also, I'm going to tell you one more part to watch out for this weekend for Ole Miss. The, the guy really hasn't done too much the first two weeks, but I'm expecting a huge game with him this weekend for Ole Miss. And that is uh, Javon Robinson. Now, even last week versus uh, Western Carolina, Georgia Tech had a lot of problems with, uh, I forgot the guy's name, he's number one, very fast receiver, they also had a pretty fast running back too, uh, they did a bunch of jet sweeps last week versus Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech had huge problems just chasing down the speedsters, and especially in open space, when the guys hit to the corners, the Georgia Tech defense just couldn't catch up with them. I'm definitely expecting some jet sweeps this weekend with Robinson, or hopefully get him in open space this weekend, and hopefully he'll kind of do his thing and uh, you know break some tackles and outrun the Georgia Tech defense. But uh, that is one guy I'm kind of expecting had a huge weekend this weekend. Though he hasn't really done too much so far this year for Ole Miss, but uh, Javon Robinson might be a guy to watch out for this weekend for Ole Miss. Now talking about the Ole Miss defense. The top four guys for us so far in the season, number zero, safety, Tashim Johnson, 17 tackles on the season. Uh, linebacker, Troy Brown, 16 tackles. And then number three, Ovis Reese, has 11 tackles. And then the other guy, number 23, uh, Kawhi Coleman, 10 tackles. But this guy has two and a half sacks for us on the season. The Coleman, pretty good boisterer, uh, always applying pressure to the quarterback. Um, I would say Coleman, you could, I mean, I think you can make the case. Coleman might be your best two guy, best guy here in the first two weeks of the season. Um, that's just kind of my thoughts, my opinions, but, but definitely in this matchup, you're going to spend a bunch of running for both teams by Georgia Tech and Ole Miss for sure. Um, really my biggest question with Ole Miss is, you know, with Ole Miss, Ole Miss only has three guys rushing the ball, and everybody else kind of drops back and pass. Um, that kind of works more for like a team that passes the ball. do not really work as much for the team that runs the ball as much. So for Ole Miss, I'm kind of hoping Ole Miss kind of blitzes the ball this weekend. Uh, Ole Miss really hasn't blitzed too much in the first two weeks. Uh, but I kind of hope Ole Miss blitzes a bunch this weekend, and um, hopefully we can stop the run this week. And then Georgia Tech... They kind of kind of did the same one, kind of same defense, but for them it's kind of weird because they have they have a guy who they kind of have like a four. I hate explaining this. It's kind of like a four-two-five defense, but a lot of times it looks like one of their defensive ends is about the blitz, but then when the quarterback says hut, he drops back and he plays like a linebacker. Um, kind of like a Sam Williams for Ole Miss. You know, Sam Williams is kind of the, one of the guys that kind of did the same thing for Ole Miss as well, too. A guy that blitz pretty often but could play linebacker as well, too. You're going to see Georgia Tech definitely confuse Ole Miss this week, try to mix some things up. And hopefully for Ole Miss, uh, hopefully they don't confuse us this weekend. But uh, not trying to be biased here, but I'm, I am expecting the Ole Miss win. Uh, Ole Miss is just a better team, more athletic, more physical um, they look better the past two weeks as well, too. Um, uh, definitely not expecting blowout. I think it's going to be pretty close, but I'm definitely expecting Ole Miss to take off in the third or fourth quarter this weekend. If I like to do a score prediction right now, I'm going with Ole Miss. Uh, I'm going with Ole Miss 38, 
I'll give George the Tech. We'll do, uh, let's see, Ole Miss 38. We'll do Georgia Tech 24. I think that sounds kind of pretty fair. So we'll see how Ole Miss and Georgia Tech can do this weekend. Uh, for me as an Ole Miss fan, you know, hopefully Ole Miss can win and pull it out. But, um, but yeah, so it's kind of my thoughts, my opinions on the game this week. And I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts and opinions as well, too. But that's pretty much all I got for the video. If you could please feel like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already, it would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Your boy Trent is out. Peace.